Hello, I'm back and I'm ready to start another little, little series of videos inside a larger series of videos and the topic here is arrays, an array in JavaScript. What is an array? Why do you want to use one? What's the syntax for an array? What kind of things can you do with an array? And ultimately I have a goal with this. So if you remember recently in a previous video, it was actually a couple weeks ago when I recorded it, but who knows how you're watching these. I recorded a video where we looked at making an object, an object as this collection of properties, this thing that maybe has an X and a Y and a color and a size, and then this idea that you could put a function inside the object. So that thing that has a bunch of properties could also, you could issue commands to it, like move or draw yourself or change color. And so if you can get one object, like this object, which I'm now telling it to move and bounce and display itself as a circle, if I could take that single object, how could I easily duplicate that object every time I say click the mouse? Click, 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 click. The idea here, and I have this list of videos that I'd like to make all the way up to number four, which will really go through all the pieces of this. So how does an array even work to have a list of these objects? How do you, um, how do you then have the object in the array? How do you deal with making multiple copies of that object in the array? How do you deal with adding the objects to the array one at a time? These are all the pieces that I would like to get to and then I have a few other topics like clicking, how to, like, how to interact with an object by clicking or moving the mouse or how to have two objects interact with each other. So this is the full scope of the videos I'd like to make. There are six of them. I'm hoping they'll each be about 10 minutes and I'm gonna get right started right now with the first one what is an array. So let's move this out of here and I'm gonna come over here to my trusty whiteboard. It's very friendly to me. It, it talks to me because nobody, I'm talking, I talk to a whiteboard now, that's what I do. Camera, I used to talk to the camera, now I talk to the whiteboard. Okay, so what is an array? Why do you wanna use one? Well, let's, let's dial ourselves back to a happy, warm and comfortable place. I could say something like var num equals five. It's, very high, tall, high on this uh, whiteboard, but I think you can read it. This is comfortable. I have a variable, the name I made up for it is num, and its value is five. So if I wanted to have a second one, I could add a second variable. But here's another way I could have a second number that I'm storing. var nums equals square bracket five comma three n square bracket semicolon. So an array is a list of values in separated by commas embedded inside of open and closed square brackets. This is not that dissimilar, strangely enough, to this idea we have as an object, which is a collection of name value pairs, right, inside curly brackets. So both of these are collections, lists in a way, lists of name value pairs, lists of just values. And that distinction, I think, will become more and more clear, even though it seems like a little confusing right now, why do you use one or the other, as I, as I start to show you more and more uses of them in different examples. Let's we'll see what that distinction is. I'm gonna, but the key distinction right now that's super important is that the order of this list, the order of the array is what matters. Elements in array have an index. They're the first element, they're the third element, they're the last element, they're the element in the middle. That ability to have the elements in an order is the sort of crucial key aspect of an array. So for example, this is element, well, it looks like it's the first element, right? Because it's the first thing in the array and that's the second thing. But in programming, often it's, a, the, 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 you, you have to start counting, I'm like stuttering here because I'm afraid to tell you this news, but you have to start counting from zero. And actually, it's a wonderful thing to count from zero. Everyone in lots of scenarios, we should all just count from zero. It's, it, it brings joy to the world, but uh, it also brings a little bit of confusion. So this is index zero, and this is index number one. It's kind of not that great of an example. Let's make a bigger array, 50, 71, 12. You know, I could put a negative number in there, negative 22, right? This element now has how many, this array, sorry, has how many elements? Four elements. What are its index values? Zero, one, two, three. So, this is important. An array might have four elements in it, but the index values go from zero to three. So the total number of elements might be four, 10, 20, 100. If there's 100 elements, the index values go from zero to 99. Let's practice that. So right, I have an, an array with 10 things in it. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you count from zero, you end with nine, you've got 10 things total. It's, it seems silly to keep saying that, but it's something that you, it's a mantra you repeat to yourself to get used to this idea of counting from zero with an array. 
So this is the syntax. Now let's go and put this syntax into an actual P5 example and see what we might do with that. Okay, I'm back over here now, and I've, I'm at like five minutes. So that's good. I, 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 let's, see, let's see how far I can get. So uh, ignore this example. I'm making a new project. I'm going to uh, move it over here, and I'm going to save it as uh, arrays1. Okay, so at the top, I'm going to say var nums equals uh, 100, 25, 12, 72. So there are four values in my array up there. And I'm going to make a canvas. That's 400, 400. And just for comparison's sake, I'm going to add a regular variable now that has the number 23 in it. And something that I might do with a regular variable is just say ellipse at 100, um, 200, and I might use that variable for its size. So you can see here, I have now have this variable with the value 23. That variable is being used for the width and height of the ellipse, and that ellipse is drawn there with a width and height of 23 pixels. So the next job that I would like to do here is how do I get one of the numbers from the array and use one of the numbers from the array in something, like the size of an ellipse, the location of an ellipse, the color of the ellipse. How do I pull values out of an array? So that comes back over here to the in indices, indices, the index values. So if, for example, this is the array, var nums equals this, if in my code I ever say nums, I'm then I'm referring to the entire array. But it's not that often that you refer to the array as a whole. More likely, you'd refer to the individual elements of the array one at a time. So the way to do that is, again, with square brackets. So if I say nums index 2, that means I'm referring to this value, 12, and this evaluates to the number 12, just like num evaluates to the number 5. So again, this is a list of variables. Each one of these, you refer to the array name and its index. OK, now back over here, we can now do that. So I can say, let's draw a second ellipse a little bit over, and let's draw it at nums index 2, nums index 2. Now, which one is index 2? It's not the second one in the list. It's 0, 1, 2. It's 12. Let's make it a little bigger. Let's make that one uh, 46. That's a nice number. It's an age I will be someday. <laughs> someday, kind of soon. <laughs> Not that soon, but soon. And whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, OK, so you can see this now I have a second circle with a width and height of 46 pixels, as opposed to the first circle with a width and height of 23. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> okay, uh, ah, ah, I forgot a whole video, which is, um, uh, I've got to look at how to do this with a for loop, but that'll be the next video. So this is one example, um, and I think uh, I'm going to make another example right now, and then we'll come back to this one in the next video. So one of the things to realize here that I think is exciting and interesting about arrays is that this number does not have to be the index value that I'm using into the array. It doesn't have to be a hard-coded value. It could be a dynamic value, something that's picked randomly or through some algorithm. So let's take a look at that. And I'm going to say, I'm going to save this as uh, arrays2. And I'm going to change this to uh, words. And I'm going to make some words like rainbow and heart. And um, <laughs> what are some other nice words? Uh, purple I like and um, uh, friendship. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is all I can think of. So I have an array. So in, first of all, the, the thing that I'm emphasizing here is you can put anything into an array. You can put strings, uh, text into an array, numbers into an array, objects into an array. That's what I'm getting at soon enough. So what, what, what might I do with this array? Well, I might say, all right, uh, fill 255, use the P5 text function. I want to draw some text onto the screen. And I'm going to say draw, like for example, if I just say draw a rainbow onto the screen at you know, 212, uh, and maybe I make it a little bit bigger so we see it, 32 pixels, the font size. Uh, you can see, whoops, I don't know where I put that. 200 pixels over. I meant to put it like 12 pixels over and 200 pixels down. You can see there's the word rainbow appearing in the sketch. Wonderful. So, ooh, look at this. I made a blue mass there. Whoa, magic. 
<laughs> um, so uh, the, I, I, did, I just hard-coded rainbow here. Now I want to pull something from the array. So what I want to say is, aha, what I want is words index 0. I want that first index into the array. And there we go. I have rainbow. Now if I change this to 2, I see the word purple. So the point that I'm making is this number could be a variable. What if I say var index equals 0 and put index here? And now what if I say function mouse pressed index equals index plus 1? So the <laughs> camera just went off, so hopefully this one's not going to go off in a second. But so, right, so what's happening now? The value of index is 0, so I'm seeing words index 0, I'm seeing rainbow. But as soon as I click the mouse, index will become 1, and I should see heart. And then I should see purple, and then I should see friendship, and then I should see, oh, an error message, right? So this is a key thing. No one's going to save you if you try to access an element into an array that doesn't exist. If I say words index 27, it doesn't exist. It's null or undefined or some sort of JavaScript thing that doesn't exist yet. And you won't be able to draw that onto the screen and you'll get an error. So it's up to you to build logic into your code to protect yourself. For example, I could say, hey, you know what? If index equals 4, maybe I should reset index back to 0. So as I'm uh, and it's not 4, right? Oh yes, it is 4, right? Because 0 exists, 1 exists, 2 exists, 0 exists, 1 exists, 2 exists, 3 exists, but not 4. So now if I run that, you'll see it cycles back to 0 every time I get to 4. But what if I go up here and add, uh, you know, um, love into this array? So I don't ever see love because I stopped myself at four, and now there are actually five elements in the array. So how do I deal with that problem? Well, one way to deal with that problem would be to just change this number, four, to the number five. But an interesting thing that will come up again and again is that arrays also store properties about themselves. So in addition to be able to access individual elements of the array, we can access other information about the array itself, such as the current length of the array. So if the length actually can change as the program's running, uh, for example, what if we got user input and started filling that array with words from the user? So one thing I can do here is actually dynamically check if the index equals the length of the array, right? Remember, we're going up by one, so if there's four, the valid indices are 0, 1, 2, and 3, but the, inv 0, 1, 2, and 3, but the invalid index is 4. There are four elements, but 0 through 3 are the right index values. I have to repeat this to myself because uh, you know, it, hurts, it hurts a little bit to, to have this little minor point of confusion. OK, so let's test this and see if this works. One, two, three. So what I might suggest to you is, do this same thing. Make a list of words. What if you have them picked randomly each time uh, you run the sketch or each time you click the mouse? Uh, try to use an array of colors. Could you pick a random color for a bunch of different shapes you're drawing on the screen? So what's a kind of list of information that you might use for an element that you're drawing? And what's a way that you might pick from that list, either one at a time or randomly or two at a time? Come up with a little exercise for yourself. And in the next video, what I will show you is how to march through every element in the list? How would you display all of the words? How would you use all of the values for the sizes of the ellipse? Okay, so this marks the end of this first video about arrays, and there will be more like the next one I'll record in just a minute. Okay.